We are Books on My Fandom, codename Banff, and we are international book obsessed. We love my fantasy, sci fi, contemporary, and so on. Also, Anne, because I'm in that kind of mood. And um, today's video is all about the great hunts by Wendy Higgins. I am Danny, and I'm from the UK, and I read the book. Two stars. I'm Jamie, and I rated the book two stars as well. And I'm from Canada, which I should have said first, but I did not. But that's okay. So <laughs> this video that we're doing right now is the third in our series of BAMF reviews that we buddy read once a month and then discuss. Today we're talking about the YA fantasy novel The Great Hunt by Wendy Higgins, which is inspired by the Grimm's Brothers tale The Singing Bone which Danny and I just read before we started this video, and we're like, wait a second, what? <laughs> because it's not very similar. <laughs> so, <Okay>. there's that. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about what we liked and disliked about the book while doing our best not to spoil it for you. Um, however, it's probably going to be quite ranty because neither of us really enjoyed the book and we will have a spoiler section in our written review on the blog so that we can <laughs> probably both talk about a few things. Um, yeah. Jamie's going to talk about how she hoped the ending could have gone. Um, but Actually, there's two parts that could have gone differently. I would have enjoyed the book two stars more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if any of that could have saved it or got it to a four star, but maybe a three star, but no. Okay. So anyway, um, what did we like? Um, the so narrator was super awesome. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Actually, like, yeah, no, the narrator was really awesome. Like, honestly, if I hadn't been listening to this as an audiobook, I would not have finished it. So. Yeah, I kind, of, I kind of wish I had done the audiobook thing. Um, okay, wait, no, let's, let's go back, because I'll talk about that in the what we didn't like section. But what we liked, um, so Erity's mom was a, was a child of circus performers, and apparently that means that all of the royal kitty winks um do various circus tricks and i kind of liked reading that i was just like what the hell they're doing um things with the ribbons in the air those things are cool by the way i could never do that so i was like cool <laughs> weird but cool <laughs> um, i also liked okay so like i didn't like what happened to her but I kind of felt bad for the king um, because he had to do something that he was really uncomfortable with um, and that went against what he stood for, but pers like from a personal standpoint and what he would have wanted for his daughter. But he, um, he had, like, he, they explained why he had to do what he had to do. And yeah, I felt bad for him. Um, the kids mm -hmm. were quite cool in a, or they're not kids, they're like teenagers, so Terry, Tieran, something like that, Vixie, they were, well, Vixie was kind of annoying, but I also saw her was doing things that I would do, like she had no filter, and I have no filter. Um, and also there were the uh, cool tribal ladies from the matriarchal tribe, and I loved how they were turning all of the things that the guys thought it was acceptable for them to do to women, these ladies were doing to the men. And whilst I don't condone like any kind of one-sided inequality thing, I thought it was kind of funny that you know, they were doing it to the guys, and the guys were like, wait, she just squeezed my butt? <laughs> Yeah, it was nice to see them kind of flustered because the guys were all douchebags. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I liked kind of 
the female friendships and relationships because both Winneth and Arity were so worried about one another and just wanted to keep each other like happy throughout this entire novel. Like they were really concerned about whether the other one had like happiness in their life and like especially when it came to the romance, except that's kinda all they talked about when they were together. They yeah. only really talked about boys. Yeah. And it was like about oh their romantic relationship happiness. But it was it was kind of sweet. Like it was nice that they weren't competing. Over yeah. This. They they were like interested in what the other was feeling about boys, which <laughs> I mean you know it, it sucks that I have to qualify it by saying about boys because it, it would have been nice to just be like how are you feeling about this giant monster thing and the other one being like I'm gonna go kill it you know but instead they're like how do you feel about Leaf and it's like. <laughs> I don't really care about Leaf, guys. Like, let's go kill this beast and get on with our lives. So. Yeah. Okay, so, um, <laughs> Leaf or Elvie? I can't say Leaf. I'm sorry. I can't. Elvie. Lord <laughs> Elvie. Um, yeah, so, guys, we're swapping over to the what we didn't like section. And let me just start with Elvie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, he just grabs women and kisses them, and he thinks that that's okay. And... Sorry, like, whoop, spoilers. Um, I'm not going to tell you who it was. But yeah, he just he just seems to think that, you know, he wants someone, so, like, he can have them, right? It doesn't matter okay. if that's what they want. No, like, I'm going to spoil this too. But, like, he's, like, to Winneth, he's, le- like, in love with her. Ah, oh, I want to be with you. Except I'm going to marry your cousin and just sleep with you instead. Because we can't obviously be together. So, how swoony. Please marry my cousin and sleep with me. That's what every girl's dream is. Oh my god. Oh, but it's okay because he's like, in a vest, and his arms are showing, and he's got muscles, and it's cool, man. Oh yeah. I mean, vests are pretty cool, so. <laughs> oh, oh, next. Yeah, that's the next thing. World building. <laughs> So, so I was like, I was like, when I started the book, I was like, cool, they have maps. I love this. I love maps. And people were asking me, what are you reading? What are you reading? And I was like, it has maps. Oh, yeah. I didn't see said maps because I listened to the audiobook. So yes, Danny showed me the map today. <laughs> yeah. So you've got three maps. You've got, like, the whole of the uh, island with the five kingdoms. You've got sort of a country map and then you've got a zoomed in section that shows the royal land so you've got the castle the gardens forests docks blah 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 i was like this is awesome cool but <laughs> so uh there is like some serious inconsistency between the maps and what happens in the books so like they can to give you context, there are the royal lands, and then at some point, apparently, they managed to cross over to the mountains over there in the space of a day. Okay, so you think they're on foot, I think. They're, yeah, they're on foot, and they cross over that area in a, like less than, no, less than a day, like in a few hours. So that makes it seem really small, like, you know, the size of a large city, maybe? But that's on the big map. That's, like, from there to there. Okay, so this is a very small island, and yet they seem to have, like, Loch Loch <laughs> Um, Scotland, basically, <laughs> like Scottish <laughs> Scandinavia up top, um, like an African land down below. So they have all of these different um, climates that, in on our on, in our world, are thousands of miles apart. Okay, um, you've got like 
sub-Saharan African, sort of, yeah, central and sub-Saharan African climates down in Kalor. And then in Ascomani, or however you pronounce it, you've got more Scandinavian climates. But they're all squashed together on this island. And like the sense of distance given by the, um, the story does not match the, the, the lo- it, does not, it just doesn't make sense. It's not logical. I don't know if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Jay? That does make sense. You, you understand. I do know what you mean. They only traveled for like three hours when the sun went down to like find the beast and were like continents away basically. It was, I didn't realize it because I didn't have a map, but it seems illogical now that I can see the map. Like that's enough time to maybe go from one river or a river a little while, but not right across the country. Okay. What? You You can't walk across the country in eight hours? I could walk across the country in eight hours. Yeah, I'm sure you can Canada. walk across Canada in eight hours. <laughs> yeah, Canada, like, whoa. I could probably do it in four, let's be real. <laughs> coast to coast in four hours. The okay. flight isn't even four hours. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, so what I didn't like was the men in general, because they're all really douchey. Like, super douchey. <laughs> Like, I don't even know how to explain it. I can't even pronounce his name. Tiern. You listened to the audiobook. What was the little brother called? I think it was Tiern, but I really, like, anytime a man was mentioned, I was like, mm, tune in out. So, like, like, he was okay. But, like, the, he was just... Two love interests. And both. Yeah. And whatever his name was. I was kind of yeah, happy I just, that smashed him. It was I cool. just couldn't get there. Like, oh, Pax doesn't want to marry anybody, but maybe Arity because she's just so beautiful. Oh my god, ooh. I yeah, I just that, think, that like no. Thing, at the beginning when they first meet, I'm like, ew. But it's okay. So yeah, I thought it was <laughs> gross to start off with, and then there were a couple moments. Where I was like, okay, I can see it now. And he was starting to, like, grow on me a bit. Mm-mm. Uh, but it's not enough. I, it's not enough for me to read the next book, you know? Yeah. And, like, for me, the... Opportunities. Yeah. The... With, like... Even just, like, the magic, though. Because, you know, this beast is here. And, like the lashed there just wasn't an explanation like not that you need like a super complex explanation but more than just there's some purple on my fingernail like okay i have some purple on my fingernail does that mean that i have magic like give me just a little bit more like mm, which is probably also never mind (laughs) And last thing I didn't like was that it was super heterosexual. Like, every single female that was mentioned had a male counterpart to be in love with. Oh my god, it was like a soap opera. (laughs) It was not even a love triangle. This was a love, like, circle. Circles don't have an end. Well, no, no. My fifth grade, fifth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, one of the teachers that I had at some point um, said that a circle is actually made up of so many um, angles and lines that it just ceases to look like it has circles or lines and angles. Mmm. Wow. Math. But basically, everyone loved everyone else, or, no, but I think a circle makes sense, because, like, they were all, like, he was in love with her, and she was in love with him, and he was in love with her, and she was in love with him, and I was like, I'm swearing a lot. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, actually, I do swear this much. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't usually <laughs> swear um, oh, it was just so much melodrama. <sighs> Uh, uh, uh. 
I don't know. I just, I don't like when, like, even with books like Six of Crows, where it was like, there's six people, but they all end up paired off. And like, no, life doesn't work that way. Nobody's going to come and just magically have enough for everybody. There's not enough for everybody. <laughs> That's a really bad analogy. I'm sorry. China. Sorry. You know, with the whole killing all the girls thing. Now they're yeah. like villages of bachelors. Sorry, right, true life, real story. It doesn't happen in reality. You don't just have enough women and men to pair off. That's why you have homosexuality. <laughs> but there wasn't even that. <laughs> there should have been some of that. There was, mm, okay. <laughs> That's going in the spoiler okay. section. <laughs> okay, and um, I think, like, just to round it off to give you guys an idea of, like, I, this book caused a serious um, reading slump, and I started it one day, and then I was like, nope, <laughs> and went off and read an entire other book in one day that had perfect romance. Um, but yeah, I was struggling to keep my eyes open. Uh, this is about 400 pages. I should have read this in five hours, maybe. I mean, I think, but it, it was a chore and I kept like putting it down and going, no, no, you have to finish it. You have to finish it. I actually finished it today. Um, after we, I was supposed to finish it just because it was like, Kill me now. And then only at the very end, I was like, oh, exciting things are happening. Kisses and monsters and evil ladies and things happening. I was like, oh, that's the last 10 pages. Okay, cool. Bye. Yeah, I listened to the audiobook at three times the speed. So I finished it. I think it's like a 10 hour audiobook. I think I finished it in like three and a half or four hours. And, like, at points I had to just pause because I was like, this is stupid. But I also knew that because we were doing this, I had to finish it. Yeah. So, here we are talking about a book we didn't like. <laughs> oh, this is so sad, but at least we're both on the same page. But, I know. Okay, hold on. So, the book in one quote. You From the book. This? The whole book summarized by one soldier's quote. Or not actually no one soldier's quote. This is more like the narrator's quote or Eris's quote. For a it's a quote from the book. Okay. <laughs> the older one let out a huff, as if all the silliness were an unnecessary waste of time. Bang! Spot on. But it's still a surprise because there was a yeah, like, I feel like if there had been just a bit more of an explanation about the magic, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more, to be honest. Because I don't need romance in my books to s satisfy me. Danny does. <laughs> I don't. I I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, give me some magic and some people dying and I'm good to go. Are you trying to make a heart out of your hair? <laughs> is it working? Yeah, it is, actually. That's why I could figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So we yeah. We can't really say more without spoiling. I stuff. think kind it's... of given an, enough spoilers. Yeah. Oh, but the end. No. Kind of no like it was kind of a twist. A little no. bit. No. No. I like it was the kind of twist where I was like, ew. <laughs> like I kind of read it I was like nope actually in fact I at 89 percent so on page 374 I said nope 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 that was my goodreads update <laughs> I don't know how many goodreads updates I made I made 20 I don't think I made that many 
it's really hard to find like where I am on audiobooks, like because I have to share my pro- like I have to hit a button called share progress on Audible, and then by the time it like actually shows up, I'm like three percent further because I listen to them so fast. So it's not really worth it. <laughs> get it to do that in audible I yeah there's like, i kind of guess there's like a hold on i'll show you i can show you after or you know what information session for the people watching yes, yes, one. see audible <laughs> so if you want to do it okay <laughs> trying to do things backwards there's like a little menu bar see and then you can click on share progress so you do that and then it comes up and says, I listen to this many percent. And right now I'm at zero percent because you heard I just legitimately turned on a new audiobook. And right. then I just click on that for to go to Goodreads. But as you heard, I listen to them very, very quickly. So I'm usually a percent or two ahead by the time I actually post my status update if I'm listening to an audiobook. <laughs> oh, Danny. <laughs> I have, I have... What? Do you not have like a little three drop menu thing? I do, but it gives me like share via message or Twitter or something. Yeah, so just click on one of those and you'll see oh. what the what the percentage is. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. That like saves me calculation time. Yeah, I usually like before I found that I was doing like the dividing thing. Should we tell them about our next book oh, instead of telling them okay. so, how to use Audible? <laughs> yeah. Um, that was our review of Great Hunt, The Great Hunt by Wendy Higgins. Um, Two stars. And also um, a little information session on how to show your progress from Audible. And um, hopefully next time the video will be a little less... Um, this sucks. Um, a little more. Yes. Because we are going to be reading The Taming of the Drew by Stephanie Kate. Strom? <laughs> um, and we also have an interview with the author next week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, see you. I mean, 